This video, I want to talk about cholesterol, but in particular, HDL cholesterol, what some people call the good cholesterol. So what is cholesterol? Well, it's a waxy substance that floats around our bloodstream, but it's super important. No cholesterol, no sex hormones, so no life. No cholesterol, no ability for the body to take in sunshine and make vitamin D, right? So super, super important. No cholesterol or very low cholesterol and actually life expectancy becomes shorter and our risk of cancers go up if you've got very low cholesterol. So we need cholesterol. In fact, Dr. Malcolm Kendrick, a friend of mine who's written many books about the heart and he also wrote a book called The Great Cholesterol Con when he's having a go at the statin industry said this, how much cholesterol does it take to make a chicken? Why is there so much cholesterol in the yolk because it takes so much cholesterol to form life. Next time you're told, should you look at your cholesterol, should you lower it, it is not as black and white as going, we need to lower it because there is cholesterol in your blood for a reason. Mother Nature would never make something if there wasn't a reason for it. And in particular, what we're going to talk about in a moment, HDL cholesterol, too low of it, well, that is super, super dangerous. So from this point onwards, don't see cholesterol as a bad thing. And in fact, I think you're going to find for the rest of this video, overall, you want to be looking up to it, not down to it. But I just want to quickly read to you what I wrote in my latest book, because I, th I think it's a good way to start the video. Uh, it says cholesterol, that waxy fat-like substance coursing through our veins has been cast as the villain in a health drama of almost mythical portions, shadowed by misinterpretation and shrouded in controversy. In this world, facts are often overshadowed by the lucrative narrative spun by the, eno the enormous pharmaceutical industries. What do I mean by that? It's been hugely, hugely profitable for the pharmaceutical industry. I'm talking billions upon billions upon billions of revenue to have us all fearful of cholesterol. And that's crazy because we can't live without cholesterol. Let me tell you how bad it's got. And in a book written by a good friend of mine, uh, Dr. Malcolm Kendrick, his book was called Doctoring Data. He talks about this panel of experts that tell us how low our cholesterol should be. And on this panel, get a load of this, the, the chairman of the panel has to be independent, can't have any conflicts of interest because he's, he's the chairman. But then the nine people on this panel, they can have conflicts of interest as long as they declare it. The nine people on this panel that decide how low our cholesterol should be, and particularly the LDL cholesterol, they had, at last count, over 70 conflicts of interest, right? That basically means virtually every single one of them was paid, was, was earning money from virtually every single one of the statin companies that benefit massively by telling us we should have lower and lower cholesterol. Every time they, they've had this panel, the end result is doctors are being told and then tell you that you're, oh no, the acceptable level now for the LDL cholesterol, the not so good cholesterol, needs to come down, needs to come down. It's a nonsense. We've been told today it should be so far lower than it was 20 years ago before this billions and billions and billions of money was made. But I've gone off on a tangent because that's LDL. Let's come back to the good cholesterol, the HDL cholesterol. So this waxy substance has a role to do. It goes out from the liver into the bloodstream and if you like, acts like a hoover, sucking up things that shouldn't be there. And we need it. And here's the thing we talked about in the other video, triglycerides. Yep, that's the other fat that's floating around in the bloodstream. If you have a measurement for your HDL cholesterol higher than your triglycerides, that's great. Call it the HDL to triglyceride ratio. You need one bigger than the other. And as long as you've got that, things are in a good shape. Now, HDL good. Let's talk about the LDL, not so good cholesterol. Well, what the latest science has now found is that LDL cholesterol, there's two types. There's one type called pattern A and one type called pattern B. But when you go and have a blood test, they don't tell you that because it's hard to measure. You just get an LDL report, the apparently bad cholesterol. However, science now knows that pattern A is actually good for you. Here's a way to think about it. Stand on a bridge, throw a beach ball over the bridge into the river and watch it wash away. That's okay. Throw a golf ball over the bridge, it'll get logged in and stuck into the bed of the river. That's a bit you're trying to avoid. One of them, 
Later science says, helps you live longer. One of them, they say, sort of is detrimental to health. But you can't tell from an LDL test which one it is. But there is a way of finding out. And that is the relationship between your HDL, your good cholesterol, and your triglycerides. If you've got high HDL and low triglycerides, you've got the right type of LDL. How encouraging is that? We don't have to worry about it if we've got high HDL and low triglycerides. And even if it's true that there is such thing as bad LDL, as in just one part of the LDL is bad for you, here's another way of looking at it. And I had doctor after doctor explain it to me like this. They said, if you have a fire in your house and the fire alarm goes off, you don't blame the fire alarm. It was just telling you about the fire. Another doctor said to me, it's like this, Steve. Your engine warning light comes on and you're driving along and you see your little red thing. You don't go putting a sticker over it. You sort the problem out. The problem wasn't the warning light, it was something else. And what they're trying to say to me and what I'm trying to say to you is that even if they do find LDL particles in your bloodstream or they put it another way, they do an autopsy on somebody uh, that's had a heart attack and they find LDL in the lining, in the endothelium of the person who's had the heart attack. Even if they find it there, was it the LDL that was to blame or was that just a warning sign? It was associated, if you like, with the blockage. Let me recap quickly. We want high HDL, low LDL, maybe, but it really depends on what type of LDL you've got. And the only way to tell what type of LDL you've got at the moment is to look at your HDL to triglyceride ratio.